gotcha, gotcha. All right, uh, just as everyone knows, this is being recorded for to be posted for everyone's educational needs, so just bear that in mind. I don't want any of the tanks or any grenades or anything going off, uh, especially around Horus where the recording is coming from, so just kind of just chill and listen for a moment. Um, I think we have a few of the newer leaders, but not as many as last time, so I'm only going to go over the basics very briefly. Um, is there anyone in the platoon that does not have a, to start a squad? Does anyone not know how to start a squad? And I will be checking platoon chat in case anyone can't actually physically talk. Alright, seems good. So, very briefly, uh, I just want to clear with everyone. My comms sounded alright so far? Yep, coming in clear. Sweet. Alright, so I just want to go over a few basic things, because this is just like an introduction to, to leadership, especially, you know, through SKL. So, just in case there's any confusion or anything, I'm going to very briefly go over the ranks in SKL, just so that you know what you're looking at when you look at the ranks. Uh, Legionnaire is the beginner rank. If you join SKL, you are a, leadership, uh, a Legionnaire. Uh, they're just the grunts, the soldiers, whatnot. Above that is Broodlord, which is what many of you are. Uh, the brood lords are the uh, platoon leads in training and also, you know, platoon leads in their own right. Um, many of you platoons just as regularly, if not more often than I do. Uh, so, like, lords are the boots on the ground platoon. Above them are swarm lords, and the swarm lords are, are the veteran platoon leads. They don't, they're not in, they don't really have a ton of responsibilities other than help mentor the brood lords and run veteran platoons, for lack of a better word. They are the they are the tried and true veteran platoon leads. Uh, above that is when you start getting into administrative roles. So uh, above the Swarm Lord is the Abathur. Uh, for instance, I'm an Abathur. The Abathurs basically are Swarm Lords that are given administrative responsibilities. Um, so I am a platoon lead that also has the extra responsibility to head the Officer Academy and to help with these trainings, like uh, above that would be the cerebrates. Uh, cerebrates are basically when you get to like the inner circle of SKL, the the the, the cream of the crop. The cerebrates are basically over groups of abathers uh, on the administrative level. And above the abather is the overmind, which currently current overmind is Uber. So uh, you know that 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 is the leader of SKL is Uber. Uh, before I move on, does anyone have any questions relating to the ranks? Okay. Okay. So, as far as just general, like, basic leadership things that I could tell you, uh, the honestly, the best advice that I could give anyone is just to play the game. A lot of the experience that you are going to get to become a successful squad or platoon lead is going to come from just you learning the maps, learning the bases, and, and forming your on that kind of stuff. So when I gather you all for these uh, leadership trainings, it's less so about telling you what base to attack when and how to approach a base and where to place your Sunderers. It's more about how to manage groups of people, uh, how to keep the energy of the high, and how to manage problem people. Um, not that we don't have to talk about you know strategy or tactics or whatnot, but I'm going to leave that to the q and so I'm just going to go through a couple of topics right now, and anyone can stop me if they have any specific questions, but any any random questions can wait for the Q&A. I, I have a list of things that is in my guide that I that I swear by just as far as just how to lead a team. And you can be as casual or as try-hard about it, but as, as long as you are one, positive, two, clear, and three, informative, you will get a lot more success in your platoons. So I'm just going to break them down very quick quickly. Number one, be positive. Uh, I know in a lot of like losing situations, it can be hard. I know that with a lot of people that are downers in the platoon, it can be hard. But I promise you that there is a silent majority of Legionnaires or just non-SKL people that are not speaking the that get a lot of their energy from the energy. 
uh, if the if you see every base as an obstacle to overcome, see every everything as a potential victory, even if you don't believe it yourself, put on an act. A lot, a lot of uh, if you've ever you know dungeon master the D and D campaign, led the raid on WoW or on the platoon. It's all the same thing. Like people in these type of people in these type of leadership positions have to put on some kind of face to uh, that they show to the platoon that is not necessarily reflecting their thoughts. And it really helps just keeping the energy of the eye by being positive. Number two, be clear. And more so just about being clear, what I like to do is repeat every order twice. Um, you don't have to do that for, like, the small orders or whatever, but I'm sure my mic's broken up a couple of times already. Uh, yep. Yeah. M mic issues are a thing in this game. Um, and also, if you repeat your orders twice, even in quick succession, it gives the new players time to hit the M screen and look around to see what you're talking about. So if we're on Chimney Rock on Amorish and I say everyone hit that U key, we are redeploying to Lithcorp Central. Everyone hit that U key, we're redeploying to Lithcorp Central. If I just say it twice, it gives my mic two chances to uh, have it come clearly, and it gives the new players time to hit the M screen and find the Lithcorp, find Lithcorp Central. And that kind of goes into my third thing, which is be informative. Um, you will always have new players, so explain what is going on. You don't have to give like a bullet point presentation on every little thing going on on the on the screen, but you, we need to bear in mind that a lot of the the mission statement for SKL is creating a good environment for new players to exist in. So you can't. I don't. Like, we don't want any of you all to gatekeep. Uh, gatekeeping is basically uh, someone who thinks that they know how to play the game and look down on people that don't know how to play the game. That's not what we're here to do. If you have a new play, if you have, you will have new players in your book. Not if you will have new players. So occasionally, don't leave things vague. Try to explain what's going on. If you're sitting with an overpop at the tech plant, maybe open the floor to questions. Uh, I do that often when we have forty-eight to ninety-six sitting on you know you know tech plant so far or something, and. I'll just say, do we have any new players in the platoon to ask any questions either in platoon chat or in voice, uh, you know, while we have some time, free time? Um, stuff like that just kind of helps incorporate newer players both into SKL and just into the entirely. We get stories of a lot of people that join the game, play for an hour, have a bad experience in the platoon because they have no idea what the hell's going on, and then just uninstall the game. And we want to avoid stuff like that because we want the community strong and we need new blood in it to keep it strong now on to another point this is something that's going to kind of vary from person to person but in my opinion keeping your squad leads in the loop is a very important way to kind of foster a relationship within your platoon it can be easy to just see your squad leads as people that are just holding the squad open for you and you basically are just Giant squad, and there's nothing wrong with that. But giving each of the squad leads uh, some kind of important job uh, to kind of like give them uh, to reinforce in their minds that they are important will kind of help make them want to help you keep the platoon cohesive and moving. Uh, I have been in many a platoon where we have had one or two or three of the squads basically just not exist in regards to where they are on the map. Uh, they'll just go to wherever they want. And I've been into in many platoons where if there is an Alpha Squad waypoint on the base, each, all 12 members of Alpha Squad are there. So, And a lot of that just comes from not being a tyrant, you know, uh, respecting your squad lead's opinions, uh, giving each of the squads a certain job to do, and you yourself keeping track of whether or not they are doing said job. Uh, another thing that is very handy to do is remembering who your squad leads are by name, uh, calling out when they do something praiseworthy so they feel good about it and their whole squad feels good about it. It basically just creates a, a mini identity within the platoon that the squads can kind of rally around, and it will help you in the long run achieve your goal. 
then number five, this is my last point as far as just, you know, going through my basic squad lead stuff. This is the only thing that I would, that is, is tactically useful. When in doubt, attack. Um, a lot of people will spend two or three minutes looking at the map and their platoon will just kind of be sitting on the base that doesn't, they don't need to be at anymore. If you're ever unsure of what to do, just have your, have your platoon redeploy Get in Valks, get in Galaxies, get in Sunderers or something, and just go to a base that needs that 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 is in attack it. Uh, you might, in retrospect, decide that you should have been somewhere else, but if you just are not at that point where you can make these snap decisions, it means a whole lot more to make a subpar call immediately over a good call two minutes too late. So. When in doubt, attack is something that I live by. If I'm unsure of what to do, I just immediately pitch the platoon into a fight somewhere else or onto a base that, that maybe needs taking. Now, in regards to the armory assets, I'm only going to go over them very briefly. Uh, if you are a broodlord, you have access to the modules and the anvils. Use the modules as much as you like. Most of them give you, a, give you and everyone in that hex a, a discount on something. The, uh, the support module especially is very useful for Sunderers. The uh, anvils are all very good. The light anvil will give you a flag. The medium anvil will give you a lightning and an ant. And a harasser. And a harasser, right. And a heavy anvil will give you a mag rider and a Sunderer. Now, as a platoon lead, looking at it, strictly speaking, from a platoon or squad lead perspective, you will be using the heavy anvil 90% of the time for a Sunderer. Because there are spots on the map that you can drop an anvil on and bring a Sunday out that you could not have driven the Sunday there. And that kind of goes back to my earlier point about how you just kind of need to play the game as much as you can stomach because you will just find these out as you test and as you play. Uh, as long as you are uh, replacing the anvils as you use them and are not using like five a minute, use them as much as you like to test around with. We usually keep four, maybe even five up at any one so just mess around with the heavy anvils. They're very useful. I use them all the time. Uh, above that is the Swarm Lords Plus. Have access to the, the Steel Reigns, the Citadel Shields, and the Orbital Strikes. I'm not going to go into them because they're not super important for, like, uh, stuff. I will, I will say that they are important. Steel Reign less so. Uh, the Citadel Shield probably the most important. Orbital Strike is niche, but very important when it's useful. So if you have any interest in learning how to use the Citadel Shield or an Orbital Strike, I would advise you to either get with me after this or uh, get with one of the if you're in one of the mentor groups and kind of go over. Tirook, did you have something to say? No, I was just not sure if you were talking because you cut out a little bit there. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, tr I'm trying to pause every now and then to let, to let my mic kind of reset. Okay, yeah. But uh, going on, uh, we're not going to go for too much longer because I want to get to the Q&A. But another important thing that I like to have and that anyone who leads a platoon for long enough will agree with me here, router runners. If you don't have anyone running routers in your platoon, ask if you have anyone that's interested in running routers. Uh, for those of you who don't know, routers are something that you make with construction that you can uh, place down and it becomes a mobile spawn. You can pretty much place them anywhere as long as they're not near another router, and uh, they are great for holding very hard bases to take uh, on the attack. And they're also very useful for defending if you can put them on like a roof or something uh, nearby where the enemy has a, a point locked down. So I would, always, I would advise you all to always check for router runners because they make everything a whole lot easier. Another thing, whether you're a platoon lead or a squad lead, is I would advise all of you to make sure that your squad is squad or squads are using beacons. Make sure they are not overriding good beacons and make sure that everyone, including the new players, know that if they place a beacon, they are overriding whatever beacon is up for their squad. And that's why we always say call out your beacons uh, in squad chat because it's very important uh, depending because of the cooldown on the beacons that they called out. If if what and there's like what well, I think it's a 180 second uh, cooldown on it, so it, it's a uh, it's it's substantial.
And of course, Sunday spawns. Uh, th these are kind of harder for you to control, so I'm just going to say make sure that you praise good Sunday spawns and kind of tell people not to park Sundays, like where if they spawn, they will be running through spawn and stuff like that. There are a lot of bad spawns. Uh, distant Sunday spawns are useless. Um, Sunday spawns that make you go through spawn point and therefore get killed by God, uh, by the enemy that's spawning there are not good. But unless I missed anything, uh, considering the people we have here, I'm not, I don't want to waste too, too much time. We can just go straight into the Q&A. Uh, does anyone have any just general questions and uh, questions about anything related to leadership? Uh, I do. Uh, today I was leading the platoon, and I had a little, a little bit of trouble just uh, making sure people were following the platoon waypoint and just going where I need them to go. And uh, I had to kick some people, but I, I'm not sure just how much I should kick people, you know, how hard should I be, because I, I always feel like I'm being an asshole, but they're yeah. just playing and the I, game, but I don't know. Yeah, it can be very easy to feel like you're being an asshole regarding that. Uh, the, the SKL stance on this is, as long as you're giving people fair warning, you can kick as much as you like. Okay. Um, like, what I usually say if I see people from the platoon in the bio lab or just somewhere they're not supposed to be, I will just say... Charlie 7, you know, Bravo 2, uh, you need to be wads, please. Uh, this is your first warning. And if after a minute or two I look back and Charlie 7 and Bravo 2 are still in the bio lab, I'll just say, all right, you guys, have fun in the bio lab. I'm sure there's a platoon in there. So go in that platoon. I will just kick them. And uh, okay. yeah, and, and that just kind of comes from the whole, like, what I was talking about, like, being positive, like, part of it. It's pretty easy to get frustrated at stuff like that, and it's pretty easy to kind of, like, try to shame those people to join the platoon. I would avoid doing stuff like that. Uh, just say things like, guys, you will, you will get more certs by staying with the platoon. You'll, you'll get more kills by being with your platoon. Uh, if, you're with, if you're where your squad is supposed to be, medics will revive you. Uh, and if you have to kick someone, don't be mean about it. Just say, like I said, you know, I'm sure there's a platoon doing the bio lab. You guys have fun. All right. Thanks for the answer. Yeah, no problem. Just, yeah, as long as you give up them fair warning, you can kick uh, kick as you please. Just just don't do it like suddenly. And you. Uh, any other questions? No, we're okay. I just want to add, uh, Turk. You did fine. You gave them lots of fair warning. Oh, Horace, would you mind saying what you said again? Uh, you were muted for me for some reason. Oh, uh, let me know when you cut me unmuted. Hello. Yeah, you're not good Okay, I just wanted to say you gave them lots of fair warning before when you were kicking them, so you're all good. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and just to expand on that, like, sometimes you will just get people that just don't want to follow orders or get people that don't have their mics enabled, and it's not their fault and it's not your fault. You just kind of have to occasionally preen the platoon of people that want to be where the platoon is, and uh, eventually they'll fill up with everyone who is, you know, on the same ball as you. Uh, like when I'm running platoons, I usually run them pretty tryhardy, and I know there's a lot of casual players uh, in the. So if people don't want to be, you know, doing what I am doing in the platoon. That they're perfectly fine to not be there, and and I, they will just get kicked. I don't remember their name. I don't hold any ill will over it. So just just remember that everyone's playing their own game. Everyone, uh, their opinions are valid. You just gotta, you just have to, you know, kind of get a feel for who is right for your platoon. Okay. All right. Any other questions? All right. If that's it, thank you all for joining me. I'm going to record all your names for attending this. Um, Pale, Pale Ski, what, who, who, who SKL are you? Like, who, who? Communist. Communist. Okay. Yeah, you're good to go. Uh, yeah, I, I was on this all earlier because I'm trying to get resources to help people. Look. Yeah, no problem. I just wanted to be able to record your actual uh, name. But, yeah, thank you all for coming. Next one is the last Wednesday of the month. Uh, Orby is running a tra another training on Sunday. And you all have a good one. Thanks for coming. You know, I, you know, I'm just casually running a max down this sucking. <laughs>